Send peace post, best and dear Drew Brock. Speaker, I'm sorry for the losses expressed by the leader uh, and our deepest condolences to all those affected, particularly the family and friends of Ailey McLeod. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure where to go with my business questions today, Mr Speaker. I mean, I could ask the leader about the £74 billion wasted in last year's reckless September budget and the resulting pain for householders. Yeah, yeah. All the questions hanging over the UK government's flagship Freeport uh, project and why National Order Office hasn't been asked to investigate it. Or the four million children living in poverty in the UK today because of Tory austerity. Yeah, yeah. Or the catastrophe of Brexit, which of course Scotland didn't vote for. The truth is it won't matter, Mr Speaker, as the Leader will once again ignore my question and instead read a pre-prepared script for the latest of her exactly. routine videos attacking Scotland's elected government rather than answering for the actions of yeah, her yeah. own. Yeah, yeah. So I'm afraid it is in a spirit of hope rather than conviction. I will ask the Leader of the House this. Can we have a debate in government time in this chamber on the infected blood scandal, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Yeah. So yeah. the terrible yeah. accounts those of us on its APPG have heard from victims and their families might be told again and hopefully finally shame this government to take action now yeah. before it's too late for many of them. Yeah. It's too late for Randolph Peter Gordon Smith, the late father of my constituents, Justine yeah. and Rachel, but it's not too late for them to be treated equitably as the executors for his estate and to be given proper compensation yeah, yeah. for all the traumas they suffered as carers during the dreadful and distressing decline yeah. uh, of their father until death finally overcame him. In the light of the second interim report, Justine can't understand, and neither can I, why registration of the estates of the unrecognised infected deceased can't be completed through existing support schemes now and using the same mechanism of the first interim payment and not to further complicate and prolong matters through the establishment of an arm's length body as the report proposes. Exactly. Don't these families deserve justice now where it can be delivered? If the leader could address that question before reading out the video script written for her, I would be most yeah, grateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, can I thank the Honourable Lady for her um, kind remarks with regard to uh, Karen and the other remarks that she has made. Um, I admire uh, her consistency uh, in her lack of situational awareness. Uh, she, she mentions um, uh, managements of budgets. Um, I remind this House the SNP have uh, mismanaged their budget despite cutting uh, 1.2 billion uh, spending off public services. They had a 100 million uh, pound uh, overspend. I would just remind her and compare uh, our record on um, uh, uh, caring for uh, children. Uh, we have 400,000 fewer children in uh, absolute poverty uh, than when we uh, took office in uh, 2010. Uh, and we also, as I mentioned in my remarks uh, earlier to the, uh, to the shadow leader of the House, uh, we've had good news in terms of improving um, uh, uh, life opportunities uh, for uh, children in England with uh, the good news that uh, English schools have dramatically improved our reading performance now for, for nine and ten year olds. We are fourth best in the world. Uh, that's having uh, inherited a situation uh, where in uh, 2012 uh, only 58% of six year olds were able to read fluently. In contrast, in Scotland, um, both on health and education, uh, the SNP is letting the children of Scotland down. We've got the worst ever gap between the richest and poorest pupils, thanks to botched reform. And literacy rates were falling uh, before the pandemic, and they've dra dropped uh, dramatically further still. The only thing the SNP have managed to increase in education is the tax burden on uh, teachers. Um, but she raises the very serious matter of the infected blood inquiry. Um, and I, I have to say that I have had uh, the privilege of meeting uh, many of those who were infected and uh, affected by this appalling uh, scandal. Uh, and I went to hear uh, some of the evidence that they gave uh, at the inquiry. Uh, it, it may fall to us in this place on our shift to put this right, but we must put it right. And there is not just the original injustice that was done 
uh, to these people, many of whom were children at the time. Uh, it is also the further layers of injustice that have happened uh, with regard to their financial resilience. Many of them lost their homes, uh, they were not able to work, uh, as well as uh, appalling uh, stigma uh, and uh, hardship that came with that. We have to put that right. That is why this government set up, concurrently running with that inquiry, the Compensation Scheme Review, because we very much wanted, when that inquiry reports, to be able uh, to make amends for uh, that scandal. I think it would be an excellent topic for debate, and I know that many members in this House would want to attend if that was secured. Richard Thompson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Good. Speaker. The running costs for the Scotland office uh, topped £13 million last year. And judging by its website, its main activity seems to be the production of press releases, mostly extolling the virtues of other UK government departments, subject matter which allows it to churn out press releases at a prodigious rate of almost a whole two a week. At £180,000 a pop, it must be the most expensive press office in the world. So could we have a debate, please, in government time? on uh, exactly what is the point of the Office of the Secretary of State, what, what the does point? the department do all day, and why on earth does it cost so much? Here, here. Our president. Well, I would suggest that uh, securing uh, record-breaking uh, and historic uh, levels of investment for both from the public purse and from the private sector is, uh, should be a start of a 10 uh, for, the, for the work that the Secretary of State uh, has doing. But I'd gently point out to him that uh, uh, the, uh, the Scottish Government have uh, spent rather a lot of uh, money and time uh, on uh, preparing for independence, which is not uh, the outcome of the referendum that was held. And I would also suggest that if he wants to preach prudence, he might also like to talk to an SNP local authority who this week seems to have decided their main mission isn't the emptying the bins or uh, sorting out education. It's actually trying to ban bouncy castles. 